two doctors. Israel has called the, the, my brother to come. My brother is in mute in the hospital. So they started investigating him. They brought him a map of the hospital. They say, Ahmad, how many rooms in this building? He said, I don't know. Then the Israeli investigator, like the intelligent person, he said, why you are ignoring us? Stand on the floor, in the, on the wall. He's telling that one of two doctors in the hospital like this. Then my brother fell asleep because he did not sleep. He was two doctors serving 200 patients. And he said, you are, um, this respect me. And why you are not afraid of me? My brother told him, why should I be afraid? I am with my people inside my hospital. You are the person who is afraid. And then they put him for lots of hours inside this room, and they kept 200 patients with one doctor, and then they asked him to leave. Then they call him and his friend on the microphone, come, we need to speak with you, and then they humiliate them, and then they bring them back. So, I was sending to my mother the videos that when I do the interviews, and you know what my mother said? She said, Omar, is it just me who's crying when you say see when you say about your brother suffering? Is it just me who's crying when I see when you describe the humanitarian issues in Palestine? Is that just me, the one who cry when you say, so I have lost 40 family members and I always tell their names, like you know Fatma Mukhalalati. She is she was 75 years old. She was the first female judge in Gaza. She was practicing lawyer for 40 years. Her husband, Fahm al-Najjar, their son, Muhammad, the other son, Firas, and their children's wives and children. Israel has wiped out the, this house. These people are not just numbers. These people have dreams. These people have careers. These people have hope. And Israel doesn't have the right to kill them. And what we have seen the, um, like, you know, lots of media outlets, they invited one of my friends, his name is Ahmed al -Nau. Ahmed al -Nau is from Gaza and he's living here. He lost his father, his uh, brothers, his sisters, and I think 28 people of his family. Do you know what the ITV has, have asked him? They said, Ahmed, were you in contact with your father? Are you, like, do you have relation with your brothers? Do you contact them? So they try to dehumanize them as, like, you know, they don't know each other, and the father and the son doesn't speak with each other. So they try, so I mean, I was speaking with one of the brothers here, I was telling him, I was invited by so many media outlets. They interview me, they take five hours of my time, they ask me to come to their places, let me tell you another story. It's important to know these stories because we don't see the Palestinian faces. So we are broken. So we cannot, like, you know, the decision to come here was not an easy decision. My brother is there. He might be killed any second. He might be arrested. He might be, so I mean, like, you know, it's very difficult to come here to speak with the media. So I mean, here I'm with my brothers and sisters to feel the support and the solidarity. So I mean, I relief when I come here. But when the media come to you and ask you, come here, come there. So I came to one of the TV channels starting with the letter I. They done an interview with me. They filmed. And then I told them, when are you going to uh, play this interview? <coughs> then the presenter, she sent me, Surya Omar, there is an Israeli British soldier killed in Gaza. So we decided to cover this story and we will not add you on the interview. Okay. So this is how they treat us. This is how we've been treated by this government. We've been policed by the community. Let me talk about the universities. You know, in April 2023, the British government have anointed something called the Israeli-British Roadmap. And within this roadmap, they have lots of aspects. They have the university's roadmap, the manufacturing, the uh, trade, the cybersecurity, the high tech, 
the parliament 